love the sin. You love the thing your flesh is after. Not just because it feels good. You love it because Satan hates humanity. His agenda is to literally bring you to I think what you just said was highly controversial. It is a weapon formed against you. Sex dreams could also be you don't have control. You've given the enemy access to make deposits that are demonic in your soul. Oof. I find out he was the one behind my father's assassination. God was showing me companies to invest in with stocks. It's happening in them dreams. No, but I, <laughs> I, my entire life was to become a millionaire. What you behold is what you become. God, please open people's eyes. But obviously we, we talk about just receiving the voice of God more so in, you know, life and more so in general, but you really dove into dreams here. Why'd you choose to really, um, really educate us on listening to God in our sleep? Yeah. So one, several things, I think number one, the, the dream realm is one of the most ignored spaces and it is so pivotal because first of the average person literally sleeps for 26 years of their life wow. 26 years that is incredible yeah and you are not designed to spend not even a day outside of god's presence right so those 26 years was not just so that your body has the benefit of physical rest but your spirit can continue to commune with god because the spirit never sleeps so while your body is sleeping, your spirit is still awake. Mm. And your spirit can continue to commune with God in your sleep. And the beauty in relationship with God is that that communion can now come to you as imagery known as dreams. And so there are times where in your dreams, like let me even go biblical before I go even personal testimony. In your, in when Solomon encountered God in a dream, it was Solomon's spirit having a conversation with God. Because God is speaking to Solomon, but he's asleep. But his spirit is awake. So he tells Solomon, hey, tell me whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. And Solomon is like a wise and understanding heart to govern these people. And then God is like, you know what? I'm going to give you that because that's what you asked for. Not the lives of your enemies, not riches. Not I'm going to give you that, and I'm giving you everything else. The things you didn't ask for. Solomon wakes up. And it, this became his reality, right? There are dreams where God would literally, um, Joseph, Jesus's foster, I call him Jesus' foster dad on earth, you know, when the king at the time was after Jesus's life, an angel appears to Joseph in a dream. He's like, yo, Joseph, you got to go. You need to take your family and get out of here because they're coming after Jesus. But these were warnings that came in dreams. Now, in my personal life, um, I, have, I have a daughter. I have an 11-month-old daughter. Oh, wow. When I was pregnant with her, there were some complications that came up, and it was causing me a lot, a lot of pain. And I remember one time I was just, like, crying and praying. I'm like, God, you know, the doctor was like, you, I need to terminate the pregnancy and then, you know, try again and all this stuff. And I'm like, not doing that. Um, but I remember praying, and then in a dream, so the book is even dedicated to my daughter because I've seen her in dreams even before I met her father. And so when I got pregnant, there was a part of me that just knew it was her. And so I remember just praying all through the night. And I go to bed in a dream. The Lord encounters me. And he hands me this black leather Bible. And he tells me she's going to be okay. And the specific word, he said, no harm will come to her. And I received it. So when he gave me the Bible, it was like, stand on my word. Like, let this be what anchors you. And he tells me a couple other things, and I wake up. When I woke up, I just had this joy. I'm like, she's going to be fine. Hmm. No harm is going to come to her. So I carry that word to today. I'm like, no harm would come to you. And so a lot of the things that the doctors were saying that this can happen, this can happen, everything began to shift. And so they're like, okay, this is becoming a miracle. And I'm like, no, it's not about your word. It's about what God said. His word creates things. And so the book, I take people on a journey. And part of that journey is, one, you need to know why you need the word of God. In the beginning, God spoke to first create before even communion. When God gives you a word, that word can change your life. Not just in, 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 the, in regards to success per se, but the word of God has authority over everything on earth. 
the word of God will cause things to find you. The word of God will defy science and, 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 and you know, facts and all these things. It, it defies logic because the creator spoke. So his word creates the word of God can bring warning. He can bring insight because you're, you're, you're talking about communing with someone who is in the beginning and the end. He knows everything. So he has foresight. He can tell you, Hey, next week you're about to take this flight. Do not go. And so my relationship with God, God has saved me and my family literally from death because of the warnings he showed us beforehand. And we were able to pay attention to it. And so with dreams, so first of all, you have this 26 years of your life right. that for many people is dead space. And so God is having conversations with your spirit, but you don't perceive it. So that's why even in the book of Job, that talks about, you know what, in a dream, in the vision of the night, when the Lord comes and literally plants his messages in men, but they do not perceive it because the soul is so loud. But the beauty is that when people start to take, I talk about taking your dreams as holy ground, then you can redeem time. That is 26 years that I can receive downloads from God. I could redeem time concerning my life. There are questions that could be answered. There are things that, I could, be, that could be avoided. And especially when in a society where we are so um, boggled down by busyness and distractions, there's something that stands out to me so much when Moses was sent by God to set the children of Israelites free, the first time he goes, he tells the Pharaoh, he's like, yo, you know, God says it's, it's, it's time up, right? This is my interpretation. And, Mo and the Pharaoh is like, oh, we see what's going on. You guys are bored. You, you, you are idle. And then his initial response was to give the slaves more work. He says, you know what? The reason you want to worship your God is because you're idle. Matter of fact, now you're going to get double the work. Mm. But what does that translate? Because you have to understand the Pharaoh is functioning from an influence of, of, of an evil spirit. So the evil spirit recognizes, wait, they want to worship God? Oh, yeah, let's give them more work. That's what's happening in our generation today. People are literally too busy to make time for God. That's so true. So the, the enemy is like, oh, wait, we don't need them calling out to the Lord. Let's put more things, more. People are too busy to even raise their kids just to get by. And so your sleep state, you can redeem time. You know, if you, when you look at the creation of the world, the evening started the day. So the day begins at nighttime. And so what I say in the book is that every night is an opportunity to receive a revelation from God. And every day is an opportunity to live it out. I heard him. Look, look, <laughs> they going crazy back there. So he getting that, that game. No, so, that's some game. Yeah. That's some game. So at nighttime, because Jesus, and this is, this, this is what Jesus desires for us. When the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. He, when he t teaches on what we call the model prayer, he says, Lord, give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. Daily, there is supposed to be an access you have to the word of God daily. And imagine what it looks like when you can also redeem it. Um, not just to keep it or lock it up in dreams. No, you can redeem it also in your sleep and continue that fellowship with God throughout your day. Another thing that is so powerful with the dream realm is that it is the realm of sight. In the same way in your, in your physical life, in the natural life, we have natural senses, we have spiritual senses. In, with your natural senses, sight gives you the greatest expression of, on how to um, experience a thing. So when you want to, when you see something, you like from what, what, it's just like, for example, if I'm watching the news, just from looking at it, the imagery, it could affect how I feel. You can even see something and almost like, have you ever like looked at trash, like on, like maybe in a movie and you just, ugh, you don't even want to eat your food because your, yeah. your brain can already process the smell mm -hmm. just because of how you're, what you're looking at. So sight is a very powerful realm. It brings all the expression of all your senses in one. And so in the dream realm, so sight spiritually, you have dreams, you have visions. It is, it brings you into an experience of God's word. 
So some dreams might not be this elaborate thing of God encountering you and angels encountering you, but the symbols in the dream, the imagery used in the dream, all the symbols matter. The activity happening, you know, there are times where people have dreams where they see themselves like crashing their car. And that is so powerful because one, a car is going somewhere, it's a destination. And so the Lord could be, that could be a warning dream where God is like, look, you're about to make a decision that is going to bring you into destruction. Be careful. But when you wake up, you continue that conversation because I teach people that a dream is God starting or continuing a conversation with you. So it doesn't end in the dream. You wake up and you continue that. The problem is many people will say, man, I don't dream. You know, that's just not my that thing. Me. But everybody dreams. The problem is you don't remember. Yeah. It's a scientific fact. Every night you dream. So it's a space that God already, in, in the makeup of who you are, he placed that there. But the problem is we don't remember our dreams. And part of that is our nighttime habits, our waking habits, what we give access to in our ear gates, our eye gates, the sensitivity of your spirit to the spirit, to the sensitivity of your soul, to your, to the spirit of God, because God again could be speaking, but you don't perceive it. And the issue there is it's not going to be that God did not speak to you, but your, your inability to perceive his voice still has um, consequences. There was a, there was, um, I believe this was Abraham Lincoln. And I believe that was Abraham Lincoln. He had a dream while, when he, while he was president, he literally saw his death. Abra Abraham was, Lincoln. It, was it Abraham Lincoln? I think it was. Yeah. I think well, it he, was. He didn't want to get shot. Before he got, yes. Yeah. yeah uh, Abraham Lincoln. He saw his assass. He, he had a dream about his assassination. So in the dream, he's hearing people crying and mourning and he's like, what's going on? And so he, he's like walking around and he's like, what's happening? And they said, oh, the president has been assassinated. This is recorded. And he was like, what? They literally, in the dream, they tell him, oh yeah, the president has been assassinated. Wow. That week he had activities. If he understood the power of his dreams, right. he would have shut every activity down and understand that way God is trying to speak to me, to warn me about something that's coming. But just took it as a dream. When by his day, nothing in his schedule changed. That week he got assassinated. Wow. But he saw it in his dream. So there are times where God is speaking to us, giving us warning, showing us things. There are times that even there, sometimes if, if a person is in a church that is, because um, this is interesting too, because you, you can have someone who is saying Jesus and is a pastor, but they're not of God, right? Facts. And some people can be in this demonic, cultish churches. And when God is trying to give them a warning, like, hey, you're not in what you think you're in. They may have dreams where they see themselves sleeping with weird spirits or even people or people are constantly coming to have sex with them. Because what God is showing you is spiritually sex brings oneness. And so there is spiritual adultery happening and you don't even know it. So God might be bringing that sex dream to you. To there, so it's not that God is causing it. He's just allowing you to see the reality of your spiritual life. Mm, wow. this, this pretty much he's revealing. This he's is what revealing. You got going on. This is what is happening to you because the enemy thrives in darkness. The enemy wouldn't want you to see what he's doing. So there are times that you are allowed to see what the enemy is already doing in your life. Wow. And so the dream was not orchestrated by God. God is not having people sleep with you, no. But he's showing you the state of your spiritual life. That this is literally what is happening. There are deposits happening in your spirit every night because of what you are submitted to. And there's sometimes that sex dreams could also be the result of exposure. You know, what you've opened your eye gates to. And so you've given the enemy access to make deposits that are demonic in your soul. And so then you're waking up. And all of a sudden, now you are, you, you're having these weird appetites in the flesh that is not normal to you. But that's because you opened something up and it made a deposit. And so these are things where every dream, there's a type, there, there are different types of dreams that necessitate a different type of response. So a dream like that, you need to go, when, when you start having sex dreams, you need to go with, you know, at a time of fasting and prayer for God to deliver you and open your eyes to this, to what specifically did you get yourself involved in or what door opened up? 
because how the enemy works, he doesn't show his hand immediately. There are doors that op you, you open, and you would, he doesn't want you to trace it back to him. So you could be part of a church, and you know everything is right. going well. You're like, wow, this is great. Six months in, you start having, you're like, wait, what is happening in my life? Chaos is breaking out. And you don't realize that, no, you're a part of a cult that you thought was a church. Or you let somebody in in your life, and you have no clue that this person is a witch. And this is your girlfriend, you know, or that is your boyfriend type of thing. So there are times where God, because again, he created us to be dependent on him for direction. And so God wants to constantly commune with you. God can give you strategy dreams. He can show you how to make a move in your business that will change everything for you. He can show you. I remember there was a time where this was during the, the, the pandemic. God was showing me, you know, companies to invest in with stocks. Wow. And it, it was great. <laughs> I was texting my friends, my family. I say, yo, okay, invest, pull out tomorrow, do this. Because literally in dreams, the Lord will show me a company and then he will show me at what number to sell. What? Yeah. It's That's happened to them dreams. No, but I, I, I'm, I'm asking for those dreams again. There was right. one company he showed me recently. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm on, I'm on the same page with you. I'm, I'm really getting these downloads right now because I was, you know, I used to completely dismiss dreams. I mm -hmm. mean, sleep. I just did not have any respect for sleep. I'm just like, yo, rich people don't sleep. You know, all you need is four hours. So I wasn't even prepared. Mm -hmm. And I used to rush into sleep either from being on my phone or watching TV or just doing something that had my energy going. I would just try to go straight to sleep. And I was having wet dreams and, and I was waking up just kind of feeling like I'm on the wrong side of the bed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, more recently, because I have been doing that for a long time. I even convinced, I was trying to convince Tyshawn. I'm like, no, I know you have wet dreams. I know this is, this, <laughs> oh, this is, this ain't just me. <laughs> this is science. You know what I mean? And he's like, no, dude, yeah. never. And I didn't understand, but it was also when I was heavily involved in a casual sex culture as mm -hmm. well. But um, now that you are revealing this to me, it really now gets me excited to prepare for my dreams now. Yeah. Because it's this really untapped channel it, that it I have. It is untapped treasure, wow. literally. You know, one, one of the scriptures I love when it talks about in the last days, the Lord says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Then he goes into what brings them into the flow of the prophetic? He says, your young men shall have visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So now there's a whole, there's a, there's a, what old men and young men has nothing to do with age, but here's the beauty. So the outcome of the outpouring of the Holy spirit in the last days that we're already in is connected to visions and dreams that visions and dreams there's going to be this acceleration this increase of visions and dreams that comes with the pouring of the holy spirit that would bring people to into the ability of the prophetic because especially in the times that we're coming into there's going to be a great shaking in america that god is set, there are people having dreams about the things to come but they're ignoring it because they're like, nah, th this, this look crazy. What, what's happening here? Or, you know, X, Y, and Z. They're ignoring the dreams, but God is literally trying to show people, no, get ready. Because the, the instruction of God is protection. Mm. So it's not just going to be like, I'm a Christian, I'm covered. No, B he's giving you an instruction. The instruction is what brings you protection. If Noah never built the ark, you know, he, the Lord might have looked for somebody else, okay, to say somebody else needs to build this ark. Because even when people think about, like, why didn't, you know, God talk to other people or X, Y, and Z, Noah was the only one who had the heart posture, the surrender to submit himself to the voice of God. Mm. He was building the ark the whole time. Why did, for all those years, the word went out because Noah looked crazy. So there was gossip, there was, you know, rumors, all kinds of things was happening uh, about Noah's name, but no one could perceive what Noah was doing as from God because they, because first of all, if they had the Holy Spirit that was communicating, obviously they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them, but if these were people that were aligned to the will of God, then the Holy Spirit would have given them discernment to recognize what Noah is doing is for protection. God is not evil that if there was another person who was just and upright, he would not have saved them. But mm. Noah was the only one inclined to the, to the voice of God. And what is scary is that the Bible talks about how the coming of Jesus would be like the times of Noah. So, so that, that brings you into a place like, yo, I don't want to be the Christian who thinks that I'm just saved because I'm a Christian. And I'm not inclined to the voice of God. 
And so for me, it's even in the book, I talk about a dreamer's journey. The book is not just for you to just dream and that's it. It's to literally bring you into the experience of hearing and um, of hearing and understanding God's voice. So the things that are being taught on one is going to activate your dream life, but it's going to open you up to experiencing the voice of God also in your waking life. I think it's a really good super chat. Yes. That we should actually recognize that. Okay. And it's a really good question there. What you, I want you to go ahead and read that one because okay. I want to tell tell the people, guys, I want to remind everybody who's already been here and just let the people know who've just joined us. We are giving away 10 signed copies of Stephanie's book, The Power of Dreams. All you got to do is click the link that's in the bio and the description and you automatically qualify to win, guys. Make mm -hmm. it really easy. And I want y'all, once you click that link, I want you to go all the way to the bottom because that's where we feature the lovely initiates and really everybody who sent us a photo of all the giveaways that we're giving. And we got a few. I mean, we're going crazy. We got tickets to Jackie Hill and Megan uh, or uh, Jackie Hill and Megan's uh, conference. We got the four sign books from Preston Perry. We got the Ezekiel's event coming up. And now you got Stephanie Ike's The Power of Dreams. Ooh. I mean, we're really showing hella love. It's Christmas. It's Christmas. <laughs> giveaway, giveaway, giveaway for the people. Man. I love it. I love it. And this is an incredible question right here because Nicole, shout out to Nicole. Thank you for the super chat. By the way, y'all want y'all voice heard. Y'all can go ahead, put the chat on here. We'll go ahead and read them on, uh, on the show. Would it be possible to have Stephanie give us some verbiage to pray before bed? That will help us. I would say, oof, let me, even though I can, I can say the whole thing right now, what I would encourage, I even talk about this in the book. So even in the book, I have prayers at the end of every chapter. But what I would encourage is when going to bed, even as simple as reading Psalms 23. Hmm. And not just Psalms reading it, Pulling it up now. meditating on it. So, okay, let's, let's read this, right? Let me pull up one of my favorite versions of this. So New King James Version, it says, so, so, and, and flow with me. Don't, when you go to bed, when you meditate, meditation brings your, your, brings all of you into what you're, what you're um, reading, right? What, what I mean by that is oftentimes we are saying one thing, but our mind is somewhere else. That's so true. And God does not respond to words. He responds to heart. Yes. So that's why even when, when God was, was showing, um, was teaching in his word, what he looks at when concerning, when, when David was about to be anointed king, he's like, look, man looks at the outer. I look at the heart. Mm. So God is not hearing words. He hears heart. Mm. So when people even think like, man, I'm praying, I'm praying. And it's like, your prayers have not even hit if it's not coming from within. So you can be saying something, but you're just saying it just to recite it and like a ritual. God is not in interested in that. He's wow. invested in relationship. So meditation, that's why the Bible is so big on meditate. Like, uh, and meditation is not like cultural or the, the world meditation. In the world, meditation is about emptying the mind. In, in Christianity, meditation is about filling the mind with the word of God. And so meditating is when you read, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You begin to reflect on that. You know, what are the areas in my life that I feel like I'm, I'm, I have lack? And God, show me, what does that look like for you to be my shepherd? You start thinking about it. Like, God, what does it look like for you to show up in my life as my shepherd? You know, may, maybe you're someone who is believing God for a child. And you're like, God, you know, show me what it looks like to know that I don't have a I don't I don't have a want because in you I have everything I need. Reveal to me what it looks like to fulfill this desire of being a mom or being a dad. So you're not just reading the word because these words were a reflection of someone else's heart. When David wrote this, he wasn't writing it just to write. It was it was coming from his heart. Like this these were meditations that he was like, "Man, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So when we read it, we shouldn't read it like a book or a story. You right. know, we should reflect and meditate and create our story. You got to feel it. You got to feel it. So then when you continue, it's like he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. While you're in bed and you're, you're reflecting on that. And, for, and, and just imagine to the person who doesn't feel, who doesn't believe that's true. The person who just feels like, man, God, I feel like my life has been disappointed 
disappointment after disappointment. Now you're engaging in a conversation with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me how all of this is working together for me. Show me how this is actually you leading me to, to beside still waters. Show me because right now I don't see it, Lord. But so while you're reading this, you're engaging in conversation. Right. So when you go to bed, the conversation can continue. Because your relationship with God, the quality of some of the conversations God has with you is connected to the quality of your questions mm. and the quality of the pondering of your heart. Because you're t God is God. Where would he start if he was the one to just interrupt all the time? Where would he start with you? It, it, it would be too much for you. So that's why a lot of times when the Bible talks about God meeting us, it starts with us seeking him. Even in Jeremiah, when he talks about call to me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. But there is a call. The call is hunger. The call is God. There's this thing I'm meditating on. I'm reflecting on God. You know, I, I'm trying to understand this. Show me. And the Lord says, okay, I will show you. So you have to have, you, you have to come into the presence of God with questions, with heart ponderings, with meditation, because it opens the door for him to speak. Mm. That's why there are times that, you know, you might be talking about somebody randomly that you have a dream about them that night. And then you think the dream is random and it's not. What the dream was connected because finally you have capacity to receive what God is thinking about that person. Mm. So you might just be thinking about your friend, your neighbor, whatever. And then that night you just have a dream about them. And God is like, no, no, no. I've been trying to tell you something about this neighbor, but I need your heart to receive. Because remember, God is speaking to your spirit. Your soul needs capacity to receive what's in your spirit. He's not speaking directly to your soul. So your soul needs to make room for him. The soul is the heart, the mind your intellect, your wisdom. So when you lay that down, you make room for the spirit to fill the soul. When you stop thinking about, man, I, I know how to figure this out. When you're like, God, I'm, you know, I have ideas, and you're, but I'm lost. I know I can be creative, but I want what you want concerning this business. I want what you want concerning this, my, my family. I want what you want. Show me. You open the door, and he says, okay, let's talk. And then he begins. And so that's the, that's the beauty of prayer and meditation. Let it come from your heart, not just from your words. Let it come from your heart. Because you could be reciting someone else's words. That, that's not going to strike a chord. What strikes a chord with God is authenticity. That's beautiful. I'm looking at Psalms 23. I remember knowing it as a kid, but I'm looking at it. This is beautiful. Like even mm -hmm. just the quick, I'm looking at the quick read. It just relieves pressure. Yeah. And honestly, you know, it's funny because as a kid, you know, I'm just, Reciting. it's just all words. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really a ritual as a kid. Yes. And, you know, it, it does take a true level. Like you said, it mm -hmm. is, a lot of it is veiled. We were talking about this the other night because we um, are in a Bible study together. You know, you really got to unlock that joint. You know, like. <laughs> you got you to gotta look up some of these words. Really, yeah. You know, it's like, it's really, you got to really go in for a, a lot of it to make sense. And I just love the breakdown that you, because again, these are very complex ideas. The soul, mm -hmm. the mind, our wisdom, the spirit. But you're really giving me a picture of how all of these things work together. Yeah. I think the biggest thing now that a lot of us can take away, especially in our culture, this is probably in human history, this is probably the noisiest mm -hmm. we've ever been as humans, ever. We have never been so saturated with information, with music, with events, with gossip, yep. with entertainment, with education. So much. With everything. Right. So to be able to make room at this point in our souls has to be an absolutely intentional process because we're... <laughs> Probably if, if it wasn't nothing but a candle and some books back mm -hmm. in the day, that ain't the situation yeah. now. So you really have to be absolutely intentional. I can imagine this is probably the hardest time ever also to hear God in this era that we're in. So much noise. Due right. to the noise. So much noise. That That's why, you know, I also, like, there is, and, and I just, I, this is coming so strong. There is 
God wants to bring people into financial security. And I'm not just talking about through a job. There are ideas that God wants to give people mm-hmm. because it, it would separate you from, you know, this hustle and bustle culture that is keeping you from doing kingdom things. Yep. You know, because the truth is you, you, we have bills. You have rent, you have car notes, right. you have this, you have all these things. And there are ideas that God wants to release on the earth where people, where his people would know that, hey, I don't got to worry about this. Actually, now I'm going to be someone who is financing the kingdom, financing the things that are connected to the kingdom because there are people whose assignments in God are being buried on their work under busyness Mm -hmm. under this mundane day to day day to day because you're like man your 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 number one things i gotta pay bills i gotta do this i gotta do that i gotta this but this is the beauty of when you're in you you being in the presence of god has to be number one priority because that begins to shift every area of your life into alignment with god's plan when you make that you see the bible talks about how you know the secrets of the lord you know, are with those that fear him, the secrets of God. The, th- that to me is so powerful. And, and just like even when we're talking about fearing God, there's a reverence you have for God. There's a reverence you have because you know, Lord, I need you yes. to function in this life. The secrets of God, anything, when, when we even look at science, every, um, you know, discovery of science is really just, a revealed secret of God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's true. It's just, it's, it's a secret of God concerning the body that he allows man to know. So how do we cure this? The reason why we're still trying to figure out how to cure cancer and cure these things is because that's a secret that is still with God. Mm-hmm. So the secrets of God are with those that fear him. When you tap, when, when you live your life and say, God, I want to posture myself in a way that you are my number one thing. I, I, you are my priority. All the things, that's why the Bible, the Bible was not being, um, you know, almost like not caring about you when it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. No, because everything is in the kingdom. So when you seek first the kingdom, it's like, no, everything you're looking for <laughs> is actually in the kingdom. Right. So when you're seeking other things and not the kingdom first, you're just, you're, you're, you're chasing two rabbits. So, okay. So now you mentioned prosperity pretty mm-hmm. much. And as something that you should, that you should receive once you find the kingdom. I, I would say this, right? Just to qualify it. In the, uh, there are moments where there's a word that just comes very strong. Okay. And I believe that even people, there are people watching and, because sometimes the Holy Spirit would even make you aware of the people who are connected to the sound that is happening right now. And there are people watching that literally there is a desire of business. There's a desire of, of establishing their own thing, opening, you know, there, there, uh, there's something that is a desire that they can't shake. But that is also because there are people who God literally wants to release secrets that would be very lucrative business ideas. And because there are people that he can trust with wealth. There are people that he knows that they can finance things of the kingdom. Um, So this is, this is a very unique word. And the people who it's connected to, when the word of God goes out to a person, you, you can, you sense it. There's something that confirms it in you, but seeking first the kingdom does not always look like worldly success. Mm. Because in God, success in God is when your life is in alignment with his counsel. That doesn't always look like God worldly success because there are people that are in impoverished places right now that are living out the will and purpose of God for their lives, right? And so, I mean, look at the disciples. They walked with Jesus and some of them, they they ended up as martyrs. Mm. There's nothing, there's no worldly success as a martyr that you died because you believe the gospel, that you died because you didn't deny Christ. That's not what the world will call success, but it's success before God, because you did not deny my name on earth, right? So seeking God does not mean, man, I'm gonna be blessed, like m- money's gonna be rolling everywhere. No, because then you might use Jesus as a vehicle for gain. 
God is not about that. Sometimes you might be seeking God and you giving everything away, mm. right? But, but success in God is when your life models what he wrote concerning you. And that could be different for everybody, right? But that word about business and finances is because there are people watching this right now. And there's been a fear. There are some people, and this word will be confirmed to those who it's connected to. There are people who have this fear of diving in to a business idea that God, so the fear is locking them up from receiving. Right. It's like, no, I don't want anything in my life to, you know, I don't want to invest or do, I, I, I'm trying to be locked in in what I know. And this does not mean quit your job. No, there's wisdom in the kingdom. <laughs> you know, this is not because you might be investing some of that money you're making <laughs> from your job. But it's this word is just to open people up to say, look, if God is going to give you a business idea, trust him and run with it. Because there's something that he wants to set you free from so that you can you, you, you can move on to other things concerning your life. You're not trapped in this chokehold of this mundane lifestyle, which goes back all the way again into Egypt. Oh, you want to worship God? Let's give you more work. Mm. And it might not always be good work. And work is typically the number one excuse yeah. for not spending time with God. Yes. Yeah, like, oh, man, I'm working. I'm tired. I'm da 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 And here is why. Because Jesus, I always tell people, pay attention to when Jesus speaks. When Jesus took three of his disciples to pray with him, and they fall asleep, and then he's like, y'all, y'all couldn't even pray with me for an hour? When Jesus says that, he's revealing a mystery and a secret, that the minimum is, one hour. is an hour. One hour, right. The minimum. The minimum to even come into a place that what you're praying is, becomes effective is an hour. Mm. So... Imagine that, 24 hours, and then I, you, you work in for maybe nine or ten of them. Mm -hmm. You sleep for eight of them. Then you have a family. You have this. You're like, where am I going to find this hour? You know. But now we have to be intentional because social media, Instagram has this beautiful thing where you can track how many hours you're, you're on the app. Mm -hmm. That's where you could find some of that time if you're intentional enough. I like that. If I like that. If we, you're intentional enough. We actually committed, uh, me, Delano, and Tyshawn to waking up between the hours of four and six. Mm -hmm. Just, we, you know, I just found that's the sweetest part of oh, the day. Oh, man. It's quiet. Yeah. It's oof. Yeah. And it's had tremendous impact. Yeah. I mean, you literally do that for one week. It's oh, like yeah. your whole your whole perception of your current condition yeah. will change. Yeah. And uh, I just think that's just really, really solid game. And you feel that you feel that morning with what it should be filled with. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's that thing, kid. Because we've been, you talking about in the morning, it's a workout happening, it's reading happening. You know, even we we are um, having great conversation among ourselves. The the level of preparation into our day, the meditation is that all the great things mm -hmm. are accomplished before eight a.m. Yeah. And it just feels. It feels tremendous. Yeah. The, the rate at which you can develop is, is truly on another level. And um, one of my closest friends, I remember my best friend, he had a baby. And um, this is an ambitious brother. He's doing a lot of things. And I'm, I would ask him, I was like, bro, what is the key, bro? Like, because he, he, he on the same level of me and, and with, with, less, with less, more baggage. You know, he got a mm -hmm. wife, kids, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to call more it baggage. Blessings, more blessings. <laughs> more blessings. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? More See, it's more, in, it's more, in. It's more in. responsibility. <laughs> right. So we are noticing there is a fear you have. Because <laughs> right. out of the abundance of the heart. <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, listen. My, I'm sorry. He know, he know. He probably, listen. I'm not, I'm not you know, your family's not baggage, brother. Okay, I love you. But in general, I'm like, yo, what's the secret? How are you pulling this off? And mm -hmm. the first thing he said, bro, you better wake up. He said, you got to wake up. I cannot not wake up at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. I have to wake up every single day. And it's so hard. And it's, yes, yeah, yeah. so simple. So simple. But so hard. Mm -hmm. To be consistent at it. Yeah. But, man, Stephanie, man, you just gave us. You, you get, I, you, my head right now is so full <laughs> of things that you have just provided because the what you're saying I know when somebody knows what they're teaching because you're able to make these complex ideas so simple. And it mm -hmm. hits. It hit right here. It hit. And I I have so much to apply. I'm see, I'm so pragmatic. 
I need things to be practical for me. Yeah. No, I same. I that's what me, that's the only way yeah. I truly can learn same. and understand. And when it's not practical for me, I'm not even able to really mm-hmm. receive it. And more more than anything, apply it because I'm mm-hmm. very action oriented. Yeah. So like you give me some good game, I'm doing it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not waiting. 